Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Andrew Griffiths here. How are you today? Uh, I'm here to interview my good friend, Sam Harrop, who's an author, speaker, uh, on amazing mentor, pretty much is uh, a bit of everything. Sam's got two books. The first one, Getting Stuff Done. Who doesn't need to read this? Now, Sam and I did a webinar about this, which kind of went crazy. And uh, we put the copy of the webinar, the presentation on SlideShare. It's had 450,000 views or something ridiculous on that um, around that. So it's a pretty, pretty big topic, Sam. It is. Um, the second book was Small Business, Big Exit. And, uh, and I've been with Sam through his writing and publishing journey. So uh, we're going to find out a bit more about you today, Sam. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, judging by that accent, you're not from Kansas, right? No. So, so where, where, tell us about where you're from and how did, did you get to be sitting here in my kitchen for this interview? I immigrated from uh, Johannesburg, South Africa just over eight years ago. Uh, prior to immigrating, um, you know, grew up in South Africa. Both my parents are English, but grew up in South Africa. Have always had my own businesses, have always had a vested interest in business. Um, studied a BCom at university um, and then became unemployable, basically. Um, <laughs> so always... The true entrepreneurial <laughs> part, yes, I'm unemployable. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, so, you know, I started my first business when <laughs> I was at uh, college. And uh, by the time I'd finished my degree, I was earning more money from that business than I could in any job. So. Were, were you entrepreneurial as a kid? Like, did oh, you do? Always. Were you always kind of setting up businesses, buying and selling, and wheeling and dealing with the other kids? Yeah. Oh, look, and some some were better than others. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we went from uh, selling fleas. Uh, <laughs> I think that's actually called a scam. You know, I love it. I love it. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. We we worked out that if you if you had um, if you had lice, you couldn't go to school the next day. And right. uh, my best mates um, had a dog that had fleas, so we used to catch the fleas, put them in a matchbox, and actually sell them at school. And I uh, used to tell your mother those were lice, and uh, you couldn't go you couldn't go to school the next day. Um, I unfortunately, cannot, I, I cannot believe you haven't told me that story. That's fabulous. <laughs> so and then I went on to more legit stuff. Uh, um, <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. Sam, well, yeah. we sold eggs. I, I sold chicken eggs as a seven-year-old. Uh, my eggs were more expensive than <laughs> the shops, but they were fresh and they were home delivered. Oh. And of course, there was a seven-year-old selling them, and sort of progressed through this. I was sort of destined to go into business for myself. Um, had an interesting life back in South Africa. Had a number of my own businesses but also got to fly um, hot air balloons. Right. Uh, my dad's got a, a commercial hot air ballooning operation, so I used to fly for my dad. Um, I started a team building and training business, uh, which was amazing, fantastic. Amazing. And the interesting thing with that is, um, having had small businesses of my own, and then suddenly doing team building and training, working with really large organizations, is the fundamentals still remain the same. It doesn't really change, does yeah, it? Yeah, 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 it's an interesting kind of so, point. And so when you got to Australia, Sam, how long ago was that? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. And uh, what did you do when you first got here? So when I first came over, actually, um, initially I was going to come over on an investor visa. Right. And then uh, that was taking a bit of a long time and, and I was in a hurry to leave South Africa. Um, mm. Which is a common story these days, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so we, uh, you know, a good mate of mine got shot. He survived. Always need to say that part. Mm. But it was just for me, I said, that's enough, that's enough. And uh, we decided to leave. Um, and I had an opportunity to actually fly hot air balloons here in Australia. Right, of course, um, that's, and that's why you live in North Queensland, one of the hot air ballooning capitals of, of Australia, right? That's right. And uh, so that was going really well. And then I had an opportunity to actually get involved in another business. Um, and that was actually mentoring and coaching other business uh, owners. Right. And so that's where everything went from there. Nice, mate. Nice to know a bit of the background. Now, you're one of the most organized. I've just got to make sure I get my wording right on this because you are organized and disciplined people I know. And you really are. The book about you getting stuff done was really a time efficiency saver for you because you spend most of your time telling people how to get more organized, <laughs> more get stuff more done. That's right. Um, have you always been like that? And have you got any advice that you would give to other people that struggle a bit with being organized and disciplined? Well, it's interesting, you know, um, I have. I've always had that way it's of just getting in stuff nature. done. It is in my nature. I think it, some of it comes from my parents. You know, my mother's very much around action. A good plan today is better than a perfect plan tomorrow. Um, I do like to have a perfect plan though. Um, and also sort of at a young age, I was given that distinction between being effective and being efficient. So effective is doing the right things and efficiently is doing it in the right way. And so I have always been around that, always been able to get stuff done. And again, another thing my mother always used to say is that if you want something done, 
give it to a busy Ask person. Ask a busy person. So That's true, right. isn't it? Okay, yeah. interesting. So uh, you're the author of two books now. We, we know a little bit about them. Small Business, Big Exit is helping people exit their businesses. It's a new business that you're launching. GSD, Getting Stuff Done is the other one. I want to ask you a question. Uh, what did you learn about yourself when it comes to, to writing books? It's not easy to write a book. Not easy to write two books. Uh, and I always say to people, writing a book is the best personal development program you'll ever do. I'm really, really interested as a fellow author sure. to understand, uh, to, to get insight on, on what you took out of the process. Small things done on a consistent basis r- r- end up creating great results. So, so how and, do you relate to that? And, and so what it is, is around building habits or rituals and getting, doing things on a regular basis. So for example, when I was writing the book, I broke it down. I said, right, roughly going to be about 30,000 words. That means I need to write a thousand words a day for 30 days. And then it's creating a, a, a habit or a ritual around doing that. So I used to wake up first thing in the morning and that's the best time for me. And I'd get up and I'd literally write. And just by doing that small thing every single day, all of a sudden everything starts to take shape. Nice, um, nice. Again, you know, good advice from you was, you know, plan out your books. I didn't just decide I was going to write a book and just start writing. It was a lot of time was spent around the framework you know, I'm sure mm. I'm telling you the stuff that, you know, but it was, you, you said work out a framework, work out what those are, and then sit down and write. So Frameworks change everything, don't they? It does. And I could say it took me 30 days to write it, but it was probably was a good two or three months actually getting clear around the mm. framework and what I was going to write and then do it. And again, the same discipline to do that, setting time aside every day to do it. I think it's one of the things with any of those types of tasks, writing a book is certainly, it isn't actually that complicated, but it does take discipline and you do have to do a little bit every day. And uh, I know that uh, with the people that I teach how to write books is that those that do a bit every day are the ones who write the books. Those who, who plan to spend a one big weekend and write 10,000 words, you just can't. It doesn't, doesn't no. really work that way. Or what you write is terrible. Yes. So I think it's a bit of a, a advice in life, the Kaizen approach, little steps, little steps, little steps. So cool. Now, I've got to ask you this, have you got your your third book planned. How many people ask you that all the time? What's your next book yeah, going to be? Right? Yeah, it, it is Tell happening. Me. So yeah, you write the first book and they go, when's your next one? And now it's like the next one. So yes, uh, based on from our webinar that we did together and the response we got on that, uh, we want, I want to put a, a book together, 365 productivity tips. Great so, idea. A tip a day. So, so this is the, the guy that everyone has. You keep it right there. We'll make an online program, whatever it might be. I love that, Sam. Okay. Now, um, on from that, you also seem to have good work-life balance. Uh, again, I know you well. I know that you're, you're, you're big in exercise. You go away with you very much a family man. You do a lot of stuff with your beautiful family. You, you go places. You exercise a lot. Uh, but you're also extraordinarily busy. Uh, I mean, it's not like you're working two days a week and, and laying in a deck chair the rest of the time. You're a really busy fella. Yep. How do you manage that kind of work-life blending is the term that people are using these days. Sure. Look, I plan it. I, it is planned. It all comes and back to planning for you. It, it, Everything it is does. planned. It does. And it's turning around and going, okay, so I've got a couple of things I want to make sure that I do every, every day, every week, every month. So, you know, I often get given a hard time on this one. But one of the things that can get neglected is, is your family. Mm. And so it's like turning around and going, okay. That's a big issue. I need some, I need some metrics around that. Mm. So simple ones, date night. I've mm. committed to doing a date night once a month. Now people often say only once a month. And our challenge is when last did you take your significant mm. other out on a date? Um, you know, doing a special family trip once a month. And it's, it's not just a, to the shops. It's like, I'm going to go somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be expensive or big. It could be going to a, a swimming hole um, yeah, or doing yeah, something yeah. different. But something together. Creating memories. Um, so it's, it is. It's really around planning that. And the other thing is having a routine. People say, oh, I don't like routine because I like freedom. But when you've got routine, it gives you freedom because people start to understand, oh, okay, on Saturday mornings we're doing this, on Sunday we do that. And so then you can fit around. There's still gaps. Whereas if you don't have a routine, it makes it really hard. Yeah, I agree. Nice, mate. Nice. Um, you're about to launch a new business, Small Business Big Exit, which you've written the book for. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that, Sam. Look, one of the things we noticed was that there's a large amount of information available for people starting businesses, but very, very little information available for people wanting to exit or oh, sell their business. I, I agree completely. It's all um, about building. It's all about startups. It's all about this, but uh, there's a lot of empty space when you're starting talking about how do I help someone to, or how do I find information to get out of my business? And most of it is really just go and see a business broker. It's That's the extent of the, the advice. It's, that, that's right. And, and that's the scary 
scary thing is, you know, the current statistics on that 84% of businesses don't list, 84% uh, of businesses listed for sale don't sell, and those that sell for, sell for considerably less than expected. And this is gonna be a big problem for business owners, mm. and actually it's gonna have even a bigger impact on our community. Because as a business owner, they're relying on selling their business, either to go into another business venture or retirement. If they can't sell their business, they have to close their business now. If they have to do that, what about all the people they employ mm. in the community? It's massive knock-on effect. Huge flow so, on it's yeah, amazing, isn't yeah. it? Great topic, and I think it's an awesome book, and I know you've got an online product as well um, around that. And you, you do a lot of presenting, Sam. I, I've obviously shared a few stages with you as well over the last few years. We've spoken about growing businesses, developing uh, business issues, sales, that kind of thing. Uh, and I know now that you're talking a lot about small business, big exit, helping people to exit their business in, in a range of different ways. So. Uh, when it comes to presenting, like what are you talking about now as well as small business big exit, I guess? Yeah, look, I love sales. Um, yeah, it's know, big for you, isn't it? Yeah, you like absolutely. It's tangibles. Yeah. Do this, you get that. That's right. You're not as good with the non-tangibles. You always give me a hard time about that and I, I love that. I, I love that <laughs> fact. But you've, your sales programs that people talk about for improving sales, you do an extraordinary job. Yeah, it, it is. And you can, you can, the nice thing with sales is you get feedback as well. Straight you away. Can, straight away. Is it working? Is it not working? What do I need to do? Um, the other one is obviously getting stuff done. Productivity. And productivity. Yeah. And again, being effective and efficient yeah. uh, is really, really important. Yeah, there's a big difference. You can be effective but not efficient and efficient but not effective. They're, they're interesting points. I also noticed something which I'll, I, I guess, share with people that are listening to this or watching this, uh, that that you're a great keynote speaker when you start to open up and share some of your stories. You have a very interesting life in South Africa and even just telling us, you know, the story about the fleas, which is just, <laughs> I just love that. But uh, there's a lot of depth to your knowledge. And uh, I think as a presenter, you're one of those people who can draw on a lot of past experiences. And it often takes me by surprise. Again, knowing you for a number of years and, and you, you mentioned something in passing, like the fleas story, and you go, what a great insight into who you are. I've never heard you talk about that. And I go, wow, how many more little gems like that? Mm -hmm. That you have and I think that that's what helps you to create really nice engagement with your audience you have lots of advice lots of practical stuff but you're also very good at, at sharing stories with a purpose stories that, that have a real place in a presentation or a keynote or some kind of thing so um, I, I really like that and I know in your workshops and things like that you do a lot of stuff in there around the similar topics of sales getting stuff done um, that you go deeper I guess on those topics is that how you look at that I, I do and um, with workshops as well often working I find one of the quickest ways to get an impact for a business is to actually work with their team right and uh, so customize go into that business customize and, do stuff. and actually nice. work with the team and you know th thank you about what you said earlier and and it is so important is people need to be able to take sort of facts and then be able to relate it to something and make it relevant. Yep. And that's what makes a great speaker or a great trainer. We can all just rattle off a whole pile of data, go on Google, do a download and go, this is how to sell more stuff. That's right. But is that really going to help them? No. Probably not. No. You need, you need a good deliverer, you need a good trainer, you need a good presenter, a good speaker, whatever it is. And making it relevant and custom to them and meaningful to them. And uh, it's interesting, you know, sometimes um, I'll meet up with the team later, months later, and they'll remember the story and the purpose behind the story. But if I'd just given them the facts, they wouldn't have. Uh, uh, so, uh, everyone remembers the stories, yeah, don't it they? It gets implemented, which gets results. Uh, another thing that you do really well, and you've done for me a number of times, is been an MC. So you've emceed a number of events that we've worked on together, and I've had the pleasure of you introducing me on stage a few times. I think you're a, an excellent MC, Sam. Uh, and again, I know this is a bit of a love fest, but I like telling people, <laughs> I like to tell people what they're good at doing. And, and, uh, and a lot of people are MCs and they're not very good at it. And the reason I think you're such a good MC is because you are so prepared, so organized, you do your homework. Uh, I mean, do you enjoy MCing? I, I do enjoy MCing and, and it is a bit around doing that homework. You know, as, as an MC, I feel my role is to set the stage for the speakers. So it's understanding who your audience is, building up connection, and then positioning the, the speaker so the speaker can, can come on and do what they do really well. Also as an MC as well, sometimes, you know, the speaker might be a little bit anxious or not too sure, and you've got to work your with them as well. Your job help them, I agree, Absolutely. I agree. Make them feel calm, yep. you know, show that you're in control, uh, you know, all those kind of things. And, nice. and make it easy for them. So sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it's just making it easy, being there, and actually, it's about the speaker. It's about how can that speaker connect with the audience. I always find a great MC is a person who never loses their cool, no matter what's going on around them. The, the, the buildings are falling down, yet the MC is still totally under control. You know, everything is fine. And you go, like the place is on fire and the MC still, yeah, 
Okay, everyone, don't forget to take your notes. Remember to take those, you know, you go, wow, how do they stay all calm when everything is falling around? But, we, yeah. we used to do that when uh, we were running the team building and training businesses. Like, you know, stuff happens. People get injured or whatever. And I always used to say to my team, I was just like, panic slowly. You know, pause and <laughs> take control. So. All right, Sam, last question. You work with a lot of business owners. If there was one thing that you see as the biggest problem, most common problem, what would it be and what advice would you offer? I think for business owners, it's really getting clarity around why they're doing what they're doing and why their business exists. So it's sort of two sides to it. One is they've lost, they've lost their way. They don't know why they're doing what they're doing anymore, what their purpose is. And um, the second one is understanding why that business exists. In other words, how does that business actually add value? How does that business make money? What is the business model? Because when we can understand that, we understand where the business owner wants to go and then also why that business exists. In other words, how it adds value we can then help them get beyond where they need to go. So it's nice. just some clarity. Nice, nice, Clarity nice. And, and most probably mm. next steps. What do I have to do? When do I have to do it? And how am I going to do it? I think a lot of time people are a little bit overwhelmed. It, they, it's it complex, really. Who's gone to university and got a small business degree? We're just figuring out as we're going. We think everyone else has got it figured out and we haven't. <laughs> uh, and I, I think trying to understand that everyone's trying to achieve the same thing, uh, trying to give them the right advice, being supportive, nurturing. Uh, I think, I see that that's what you do, Sam. You, you, you're tough when you need to be tough, but you're also encouraging, and I, I love the way that you do that. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being on uh, on my video today. Nice to have you here. As I say, you're, you're a great friend of mine, and I appreciate the wisdom that you share and, and the advice and the discussions we have. And, uh, and folks, Sam and I have some pretty heated discussions at times <laughs> about a range of different things, but I always have enormous respect for what you say and, and the information you share and your attitude to life, to be really honest, Sam. Thank you. Um, you want to know more about Sam? www.samharrop.com.au yep. uh, or www.bigexit.com.au again as well. Check him out. Check out Small Business Big Exit. Cool book and uh, getting stuff done. Seriously, if you want to get stuff done, if you're like one of the other 25 billion small business owners on the face of the planet that just doesn't get enough stuff done, you've got to buy this book. And it's at Amazon, right? People go to your website, you can yep. find it. So um, thank you, mate. Really great to get an insight into you. And uh, thanks very much for tuning in, folks, for our celebrity interview today. Thank you. Thank you.